Okay, continuing with the acceleration video, um, we want to deal with those two cases where the acceleration and the velocity are in different uh, directions, and we want to, uh, and um, then we'll get into some specific questions or some examples. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you start with, so let's start with a velocity at 10 meters per second, an acceleration of, um, I'm actually going to make that just uh, 5 meters per second, an acceleration of 1 meter per second squared negative. Now the key feature here, we'll notice that the current velocity and the acceleration have opposite signs. What that means is that the change to the velocity is happening in the opposite direction to the current velocity, and that's going to cause the object to slow down. In this case, I'm going to do it the same way that I did the other one. I'm going to come up with time and displacement data, or position data, and um, we'll work through it second by second. So let's just say at t equals zero, the object is at position zero. And then from 0 to 1 second, we're going to assume, again, I, I addressed this in the last video, but it's, it's close enough to true, that the object is still going the 5 meters per second that it was in the first place. What that means is that uh, your new position after that 1 second is 5 meters further away. From 1 to 2 seconds, the object has slowed by one meter per second, so it's only going four meters per second. So now in the second second, it's only going to go four meters, so we were at five and we were added another four, so that means we're up to nine meters away from our starting location. From two to three seconds, we'll uh, have three meters per second. And again, we started nine meters away from our starting position. This second we went 3 meters for a total of 12. And then at 4 seconds, or uh, sorry, 3 to 4 seconds, we're only going 2 meters per second, which means it's 12 plus the 2 meters you travel on that for a total of 14. from four to five seconds, and then just for the sake of it, I'm actually going to go all the way at five to six seconds here. So in four to five seconds, it's going one meter per second, which means it started at 14, plus the one that it goes in this, and that means 15, and then finally from five to six seconds, it'll be going at zero meters per second, which means 15 plus zero for a total of 15, and we can see here that the position of the object has stopped changing. If we kept going here, what we'd actually see is that the object's going to start to turn around, and then that would correspond to a negative velocity and a negative acceleration, which we addressed earlier. So I'm going to stop. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6. I went all the way up to 6 this time. So here I have 0, 5, 9, 12, 14, 15, and 15. If I'm going to graph that, uh, one second, two seconds, three, that's the time in seconds, in the position, in meters, starts at zero. Now I'm going to go all the way up to 15, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Good, I've left myself enough room here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There we go. So these are marked in fives. So from 0 to 1 second, it goes a whole 5 meters. The second second, it's up, it's 9 meters away. The third second, we're at 12. 12, then 14. 
and then we're kind of stuck at 15 for these two seconds. Oh, what did I do wrong here? 14 should be right here. Ugh. Fourteen should be right here, and then those are both fifteen. Uh, that should be fifteen, and that should be fifteen, and that middle dot shouldn't be there. Okay, so what we can see here is just like with the other examples, an acceleration has led to a quadratic curve. However, unlike the first couple examples here, where we started with low slopes that got bigger and bigger, here we start with a fairly large slope and then it flattens out over time and the vertex occurs where the velocity has gone to zero or where the object stopped. Now if the object turned around and started going backwards the curve would start coming down like that but we didn't deal with that situation and what we can see here then is that we have a concave down parabola associated with a negative acceleration. Okay, now let's do that whole thing one more time, but this time, this will be the last time, with a um, positive acceleration, one meter per second. Heck, let's make it two this time. And let's make the velocity this time negative 10 meters per second. So it's going whatever the negative direction, like if I had said north is positive, then that would mean south at that speed. Again, I'm going to make up a table of values. T, D, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Use the same six values as last time. And what I would see here is that in the first let's start them off at um, at zero and then in the first second we're going at a speed of 10 meters per second negative so we're getting to a displacement of that from zero to one seconds 10 meters per second negative and so we're getting to a displacement of negative 10 meters or a position of negative 10 meters in that first second uh, in the second second Uh, it starts at the negative 10 and then it moves an additional negative not uh, negative 8 here we have a negative 8 it's increasing by 2 each second so that means that it's going to be negative 18 from 2 to 3 it's negative 10 or sorry negative 18 here we're at negative 6 meters per second it's increased by 2 again minus 6, 6 meters in that one second, negative 24, negative 10, negative 18, negative 24, 3 to 4, negative 4, negative 24 plus the new negative 4, which is uh, negative 28, 4 to 5, uh, negative 28, plus the new negative 2. We've slowed down even more here, so we're only going 2 meters in each second. And finally, from 5 to 6, the object is stopped, which means we're going negative 30, plus or 0, so that's going to be negative 30. Negative 28, negative 30, negative 30. So, at this point, I think you should be able to predict what this graph is going to look like. The acceleration is positive, which means it should be a concave up parabola, so something like this. And it's starting at a fast speed and going to zero speed. And I said that the vertex of the parabola has to sit where the velocity equals zero. But also you can see that if I take this part of the parabola, I start from a fast speed and I move to a slow speed. So I want this part right here it's not going to include this part right here. But let's just plot those numbers and see that. Uh, 
Uh, I'm actually going to put the axis up higher because it's a um, everything's negative on the graph. So one, two, three, four, six. That's your time. Your position um, starts at zero and it's got to go down to negative thirty. I think I'm going to have to go up by twos. I'll make that negative 10, negative 20. Negative 30. Okay, 0, 0, 1, negative 10, 2, negative 18, 3, negative 24. 4, negative 28, and then the next two are both 30. That's 24 right there, or that's 28 right there, and that's 30, and that's 30 left there. So here we go. And as predicted, what we have is we have a concave up parabola. We have the first section of it where the vertex is sitting at. Time equals five to six, somewhere in that range seconds. So I think at this point, before even I want to get into these examples, which we will get into, I want to start making some uh, general notes about these uh, graphs as they relate to uniform acceleration. So the first one is uniform acceleration results in velocity time graphs that are straight lines. The slope of those straight lines corresponds to the acceleration. For position time graphs, it results in quadratics. The shape of those quadratics has, you, we can think about it as having a couple different aspects. So we can say it has concavity, and the concavity depends on the sign of the acceleration. If it's positive, that means it opens up. And if it's negative, that means it opens down. It also has a vertex. The vertex occurs where the velocity goes to zero. And the last thing here is to remember that the slope is changing and corresponds to the changing velocity. Just to take one more set, one more second, I'm going to run through the four cases again. V1 is positive, acceleration is positive. That led to a velocity time graph that 
look like that. An acceleration time graph that was concave up in the vertex and showed an increasing slope. Let's go velocity negative and acceleration positive. On the velocity time graph, we still have an upward slope. And on the position time graph, we have an object that starts with an initial negative velocity and rounds down and still is a concave up parabola. Case number three, we have a V1, which is negative, and an acceleration that's negative. Here, the velocity already starts below the axis and has a negative slope on its velocity time graph. And the resulting displacement time graph The object is going in the negative direction already, but speeds up. And so the slope gets greater and greater, and we have our concave down parabola. And last but not least, a positive V1 with an acceleration that's negative. And here, we have an object that starts at some upward speed and comes down, and our resulting position time graph, sorry, that's a velocity time graph, going too fast. Straight slope, negative slope. Our um, position time graph shows something with an initial upward, oh, sorry, I screwed that up already. Time. Something with an initial speed that comes to rest over the time. I think that's a good chunk of information. I'm going to stop, call that a video.